So the first dispensation, the Garden of Eden, there is works for salvation. The second one with Abraham, there is faith, but there's also a little bit of an element of works there. Okay? They had to have faith in God. They're not having faith in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ did not die on the cross yet. What do you have under the Old Testament? What you have under the Old Testament there, the uh, I should say not the Old Testament, but what do you have with the system of the Mosaic Law and things like this? You have a system of, they still have to have faith that God is going to, you know, they are God's chosen nation and that God's going to be there to provide for them and things like that. Faith is still there. Grace is still there. You can see that uh, with David. He should have been killed. God had grace for him. So there is an element of faith and grace there, but there is the thing of works. You do something wrong, get an animal and take it. That's not, it's, a, it's not, well, you just do that at the beginning of your life there. Once you make that decision to sacrifice the animal, you're done, you're eternally secure. No, no, you're not. No. And there again, people get that mixed up. They say, well, eternal security. I believe in eternal security. You know, in the Old Testament there, under the law. I don't. I don't believe in that. I do believe that King Saul at one point in time would have been considered saved, and then I believe that he lost it. Okay? I do believe that. King Solomon, there's some debate back and forth there. Did he lose his salvation? He was a great man of God, but later the outlandish women turned his heart away from God. So, did he lose his salvation? Yes, I do believe he did. But, you know, again, we're not dealing with the same thing. And this isn't heresy. This is comparing Scripture with Scripture. Right now in the... Oh, and, and then you have... Okay, so we went with the law. Then you have law and the prophets are until John... And then the kingdom of heaven is preached. In that time period, they're still, you read the Gospels, that's what mostly you're reading there, this, this time period. And it's, you know, don't go to the Gentiles, you know, and, and go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, they're still, Jesus is dealing with the Jewish people. And the kingdom is offered because the king is there. They reject Jesus Christ. Now you have a new system, a new dispensation that comes in where both Jews and Gentiles can get saved. So that little uh, time period between there, um, salvation would basically be believing you know, in Jesus, but yet there's not quite the faith thing there quite the same because Jesus is physically on the earth. So how can you say it's faith when Jesus is physically there the first time? See, again, you know, you're really going to have a hard time if you want to be uh, uh, kind of like a lot of the Baptists try to take that salvation has always been the same. You know, no, it hasn't. No, it has not. Now, you hit the church age where we currently are at, and what do you have now? Well, there are no works involved for your salvation. Now, you do works meet for repentance after you get saved, but when you come to Jesus Christ for salvation, it's faith alone. Yeah, that is true. Faith alone right now. And God certainly has a lot of grace for us, certainly, you know. Um, I mean, again, I could go over so many scriptures, but i got to keep this thing fairly short to get under the 15-minute limit. You know, so there is, there is the element of, of, you know, grace there pretty much in any dispensation. But right now God has a whole lot more of it than he's going to have in the time of Jacob's trouble and even into the millennial kingdom. So at the rapture, we get called out. Body of Christ leaves. Now what do you have? You have a new time where, and we are eternally secure now too, by the way, if you read that in Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 4, um, we are eternally secure. But when you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, what do you have there? They're not eternally secure. And you look in, in uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12. We'll turn there really quickly. I should have timed this one because I'm not sure how much time I have right now. Um, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12. We won't read all of it, but let's look at verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So there are some commandments that you're going to be keeping in that time. Now you say, well, you can't keep the Ten Commandments without ever breaking them. That's not going to happen. No, that, I, I would agree with that. You can't keep the Ten Commandments without ever, you know, breaking one of them. But there's other commandments in Scripture. And I believe the commandment that's being referred to there, you have to have the faith of Jesus. And what's the commandment that you have to keep? Don't take the mark. Because that's what's going on there. Verses 9 through 11, it's talking about if any man takes the mark, worships the beast, you get the wrath of God. 
So the commandment there, and of course there's a whole lot of tie-ins there to James and to Hebrews. Again, I can't get into it here. But there is, in the time of Jacob's trouble, there is an element of, there is the faith of Jesus, and there's the works of not taking the mark. If you take the mark, I don't care how much faith you have in Jesus, how much you've come to him as a sinner, and blah, 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 all that other stuff, you lose your salvation. I mean, the Bible plainly says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, if any man, you know, worship the beast, take the mark, he gets God's wrath. Okay, so these people, oh, well, eternal security goes right on into the millennium. They don't know what they're talking about. So then, time of Jacob's trouble, you have this thing of faith and works, and then you go into the later part of the thing in Matthew chapter 25 when he comes down to judge the nations and he's judging these people and he's saying, you visited me in prison, you did this, you did that, you know, whatever else, and you get it to go into the kingdom. But the people that don't, they're sent down to the lake of fire. So it almost looks like it's transitioning. You know, there's still, I'm sure, an element of faith and some grace, but it almost is like totally works by the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. What do you do with the millennium, though? That's, that's where it really gets interesting. Look at uh, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Well, actually, we'll start at verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. Now look at this, verse 10. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Jesus Christ comes back the second time. And they look upon him. And if you're Jewish and you're watching this, you need to realize he was here before and he was pierced. He hung on a cross. And when he comes back the second time, you're going to look upon him whom you've pierced. It's Jesus Christ as your Messiah. But they look upon him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. How can you have salvation by faith in the millennial kingdom when Jesus Christ is plainly here on the earth, according to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10? See, salvation cannot be by faith alone. Sola fide. No, I don't think so. Not in the millennial kingdom. So does dispensationalism teach different plans of salvation? Well, it's always con connected to the Lord. It's always connected to, you know, Inevitably, everybody's going to believe in Jesus Christ. Sure. I mean, the Old Testament saints that died back there under the law, they went down to Abraham's bosom. You know, Jesus Christ went down there and set the captives free. So it's Jesus Christ that gets them out. Uh, Adam and Eve, you know, um, they would have, they, you know, would have gone into some, I, I guess, would have been the same thing as the Old Testament saints. And, you know, so their salvation would have been through Jesus Christ. It all goes back to Jesus Christ. That's true. But to say, to try and teach that it's by faith alone, it's always been by faith alone, and everybody's always had eternal security, I'm sorry, the Bible doesn't teach that. Uh, that's not heresy. That's called sound scriptural exposition, going through and rightly dividing the word of truth. So hopefully that answers your question.